today I'm gonna turn Rirakuma into some delicious, soft and squishy mochi. So let's get started. It's super easy. You need some rice flour, specifically this kind. It is called shiratamako. And then some water. But you wanna add the water gradually because this will create the texture that you want. Weirdly, if you add it all in one go, it's not gonna work. I just, why? And it might seem like there's not enough water, but keep kneading and it will come together wonderfully. You want it to hold together enough that it keeps its shape when you set it on the table. Now I'm gonna roll it into a sausage and I'm gonna segment it one really large bit one like medium-ish piece and then two small pieces and we are done. And the rule for coloring this kind of mochi with this dough is that it will darken as it boils. If it looks a little pale, it will darken. If it's already looking too dark, maybe like start from the beginning. <laughs> So I'm gonna take the brown dough and divide it into eight little portions. And I'm gonna roll like 90% of each little portion into an oval. And then I take the rest, divide it into two pieces and use that for the ears. We're gonna use the yellow for his ears. This little like half moon shapes or half circle shapes. And then I'm gonna use the white dough for Rirakuma's little snout. This part, I've had this for over a decade. I use it to focus the video. And then the black dough for his facial features. So this can be a little bit finicky because it can get, the dough can get crumbly the smaller you like manipulate it. If you are riding the struggle bus, if you're like, oh my God, this isn't working. What you can do is get a sheet of nori, like nori, nori. Say it without the Japanese accent. Seaweed that they use for sushi, so just those sheets, and you can get a little hole punch that is specifically rirakuma. And you can do that, punch out little features, and stick it to the mochi after they're finished boiling. And now that they are nice and ready to go, we are going to pop them into a pot of boiling water. And once they've risen to the surface, that might take a couple minutes, boil them for four minutes. And also, I made these in advance and then went away for the weekend before boiling them. And you want to make them like the day before, if that's that, like as far in advance as you wanna go, because otherwise, this. <laughs> Then after they finish boiling, pop them directly into a bowl of ice water and this will stop them from cooking and make sure that they don't get too soft and like too squishy. We want them just a specific kind of squishy. And we are going to make the sauce. So I have some water and some sugar and I'm gonna add some soy sauce on top and some supposed to be potato starch, but like I don't wanna dig through my cupboards. Cornstarch is fine, let's see if it actually is. Then reduce it on medium heat until it's as thick as you want it to be. So this sauce is called mitarashi sauce. It's for mitarashi dango, which is essentially what we're making here, but they are rirakuma shape. It is time to assemble them. So I have some wooden skewers because of course this is like the traditional way, I think. And we are going to skewer three little rirakumas onto it and then we're gonna top it with the sauce and it's like a little thicker than it should be. So now to taste. <laughs> so good. Mochi's like my favorite food. They're soft all the way through, fully cooked, exactly like the mochi that you know and love. The sauce is sweet. It doesn't taste like soy sauce, but it just has like that kind of depth to it. And do you know who also likes mochi? Paddington! Apparently not, but he gets a cookie for his time. So, satisfied with his payment. 